Hare Krishna dear devotees and nod pranam to all So today we are reading from the book The Light of the Bhagavat written by His Divine Grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada So we are continuing from where we have left yesterday from page number 40 text 23 The cows that followed the Lord within the forest moved slowly because of the heavy milk laden udders But when the Lord called them by the specific names they at once became alert and as they hastened towards him the milk bags often overflowed and poured milk on the ground because of affection for the lord it is understood from scriptures like brahma samhita that in spiritual abode of the lord the houses are made of touch stone and the trees are all desired trees there the lord is accustomed to tending thousands and thousands of kamadhenus who cows were able to supply unlimited quantities of milk and all the houses trees and cows are qualitatively non different from the lord The Lord and His paraphernalia in the spiritual abode are one and the same in quality, although there are differences for the pleasure of Lord. In the material world also, we have various paraphernalia for our pleasures in life. But because all this paraphernalia is made of matter, it is all destructible at the end. In the spiritual sky, there are the very same varieties of pleasure, but they are all meant for the Lord. There, the Lord alone is the supreme enjoyer and beneficiary, and all others are enjoyed by the Lord. The Lord is served there by all kinds of servitors and both the master and the servitors are of the same quality. This spiritual variegatedness is displayed by the Lord when he descends at Vrindavan. And we may know the Lord Lord descends with his personal staff of cows, cowherd boys and cowherd maidens, all of whom are but spiritual expansions of the Lord himself for his own pleasure. Thus, when called by the Lord, the cows were overwhelmed by joyous affection. just as mother's breast overflows with milk and the child cries for it all of us living beings are differentiated expansions of the lord but our affection for the lord is submerged within us artificially covered by the material quality of ignorance spiritual culture is meant to revive this natural affection of living being for the lord the ingredients of fire are already present in safety matches and only mild friction is needed to ignite a fire similarly our natural affection for the lord has to be revived by a little culture specifically we have to receive the message of lord with a purified heart for spiritual realization one has to purify the heart and know things in their true perspective as soon as one does this the flow of one's natural affection begins to glide towards the lord and with progress of this flow one becomes more and more self realized in various relations with the lord the lord is the center of all affection of all living beings who are his part and parcel When the flow of natural affection for the Lord is clogged by desires to intimate His Lordship, one is said to be in Maya or illusion. Maya has no substantial existence, but but as long as its hallucinations go on, their reactions are felt. The Lord, by His causeless mercy, displays the reality of life, so that our hallucinations may be completely dissipated. Text twenty four. When the Lord entered the forest of Vrindavan, all the inhabitants of the forest. both animate and inanimate were eager to receive him he saw the flowers of the forest all fully blossoming a weeping in ecstasy honey flowing down their petals the waterfalls on the hilly rocks were gladly flowing and one could hear the sweet sound of the caves nearby the lord has multifarious energies and therefore the lord and his energies are identical among his various energies the material energy is one and it is said in bhagavad gita that the material energy is inferior in quality to the spiritual energy spiritual energy is superior because without contact with the spiritual energy the material energy alone cannot produce anything the source of all energies is the all attractive personality of godhead shri krishna this material world is a combination of matter and spirit but the spiritual world which is far far away from the material sky is purely spiritual and has no contact with matter in the spiritual world everything is spirit we have already discussed this the personality of godhead the original source of all energies is able to convert spirit into matter and matter into spirit for him there is no difference between matter and spirit he is therefore called kaivalya in lord shri krishna's transcendental pastimes he reciprocates with spirit not matter when he is in the mortal world the material cannot qualities cannot work upon him an electrician knows how to take work from electricity 
With the help of electricity, he can turn water into cold or heat. Similarly, the personality of Godhead can turn matter into spirit and spirit into matter by his inconceivable power. Everything is therefore matter and spirit by the grace of the Almighty, although there is no difference between matter and spirit for the ordinary living being. Flowers, waterfalls, trees, fruits, hills, caves, birds, beasts and human beings are nothing but combinations of God's energy. Therefore, when the personality of God had appeared before them, they all become spiritually inclined and by natural affection, they wanted to serve the Almighty in various capacities. There are different stages of spiritual development in matter. In the material world, the spiritual spark of the personality of Godhead are covered by the material energy in different proportions and gradually they become spiritualized in various species of life. The human form of life represents the complete development of senses for spiritual realization of one's original affection for the Lord. Therefore, if despite this opportunity for human life, we are unable to receive our natural affection for the Lord, we must know that we are wasting our lives for nothing. By the grace of the Lord, however, the spiritual consciousness of every species of life can occupy its proper place, and these species can express their spiritual affection for the Lord in the Shantarasa, as displayed by the land, water, hills, trees, fruits, and flowers of Vrindavan during the presence of Lord Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Text 25 The Lord reciprocated the feelings of the inhabitants of the forest of Vrindavan. When there was rainfall, the Lord took shelter at the feet of the trees or in caves and enjoyed the taste of different fruits with his eternal associates, the cowherd boys. He played with them, sat with them and ate fruits with them. Becoming one with God does not always indicate that the living entity merges into the existence of Lord. To become one with God means to attain one's original spiritual quality. Unless one attains one's spiritual quality, one cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The members of the impersonalist school explain the idea of oneness by the example of mixing the river water with sea water. But we should know that within the water of the sea, there are living beings who do not merge into the existence of water but kept their separate identities and enjoy life within the water. They are one with the water in the sense that they have attained the quality of living within the water. Similarly, the spiritual world is not without its separate paraphernalia. A living being can keep his separate spiritual identity in spiritual kingdom and enjoy life in the supreme spiritual being, the supreme personality of Godhead. In Vrindavan, all the spiritual entities, the cowherd boys, the cow maids, forest, the trees, the hills, water, fruits and cows and all others enjoy life spiritually in association with Lord Shri Krishna. They are simultaneously one and different from the Lord, but ultimately they are one in different varieties. Text 26 The Lord enjoyed in the company of Lord Baladeva and the other cowherd boys and sometimes sat with them on the same stone slab. While sitting, they ate simple food like rice, dal, vegetables, bread and curd which they had brought from their homes and which they shared in friendly exchanges. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has expressed His willingness to accept fruit, flowers, leaves and water from His devotees when they have been offered to Him in devotional affection. The Lord can eat anything and everything because everything is but a transformation of His own energy. But when there is a question of offering Him something, the offerings must be within the range of the eatables of the Lord has ordered. We cannot offer the Lord that which He has not ordered. The personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna, cannot be offered anything beyond the range of good foodstuffs like rice, dal, wheat, vegetables, milk and milk preparations and sugar. At Jagannath Puri, the Lord is offered such foodstuffs and in all scriptures, the very same foodstuffs are mentioned everywhere. The Lord is never hungry nor does he require any food to fill his empty stomach. He is complete in himself. Yet, he always mercifully eats the food offered by his devotees in sincere affection. The cowherd boys brought simple foodstuffs from home. The Lord, who is constantly served by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune, is always glad to accept such simple foodstuffs from his devotee friends. All the relatives of Lord are his devotees only and they are situated in different transcendental mellows as friends, parents and lovers. The Lord derives transcendental pleasure 
by accepting services from his grades of various grades of devotee who are situated in various grades of rasas the transcendental rasa are pervadedly reflected in material atmosphere and thus the spiritual living being out of ignorance only mainly seeks the same bliss in matter thank you very much hari krishna